Now, on this next example, I want you guys to practice doing the P over Q. So therefore, we have plus or minus 4, comma 2, comma 1, all over plus or minus 1. Right? Make sure. Come on. There's a time and a place, not the time or the place right now. So we take the factors of our constant and put it over our factors of our coefficient. Does everybody kind of understand at least with this? Because again, is 5 part of my rational zeros over here? Is 2i or negative 2i? No, because those are imaginary anyways, right? All right. So again, did anybody graph this and find me, find me a 0? Yes? 2. All right, so let's use 2. So I go ahead and use 2. And we do 1, negative 1, 0, negative 2, and negative 4. Most students make a mistake because they forget that if you don't have a value, for synthetic division, you have to use, do you guys agree with me that the equation above and below are exactly the same? Yes. But we have to make sure we include that place value, all right? Now, we bring down the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1, 2, 2, 4, 2, 4, 0. So we know this is our next factor. But this is kind of tough because if you guys look at this, Here's our remainder, constant, linear, quadratic, and cubic. Now, again, I did kind of deal with some easier problems. This is factorable, right? You could actually factor this. Um, if you wrote this as x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 2, you guys could factor this problem, all right? You just do factoring by grouping, which I showed over there. However, I want to show you guys a technique without having factoring, because what if the problem is non-factorable? What if you can't factor the problem? What are you going to do? Well, what you can do is do synthetic division again. So what we need to do is, was there another real 0 that we found? Negative 1. So what you'll do is, if you take negative 1 and then take this quotient and divide it by the other 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, then watch what happens. 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 2, negative 2, I now get um, constant linear quadratic. I now get my factor as x squared plus 2. And then I can set that equal to 0, and I could say x equals plus or minus um, i square root of 2. We always like to write the i in front um, for back in there. And then last but not least, I want to show you guys something. Um, one thing that will sometimes you might see is it might ask for writing all the zeros, but it might also ask to write all of the zeros at, or write it as a linear factorization. So what that means is, yep. So you subtract two. So you have x squared equals negative two. Take the square root. We can't take the square root of negative 2, right? So you take out the i, and whenever you introduce the square root, it's plus or minus. Right. Good? Yep. So, ladies and gentlemen, we found some zeros. By graphing, we found x equals 5. By graphing, we found x equals negative 1. By doing synthetic division twice, we got zeros as x equals plus or minus i square root of 2. If they're asking us to find what the linear factorization is, what that really means is just set these all as factors. So it would look like this. And that's all that means. What it means is this times this times this times this equals that. So you're just taking all the factors and multiplying them together. Just make sure they're all linear. You wouldn't want to use x squared plus 2 as a factor, OK? You'd want to break it down to its zeros and then write them as linear factors. Yes, Gina? Somebody graphed it, and they found that 5 was a, an x-intercept, so therefore it was a real 0. Oh, so it was 2. I just decided to start using 5. Was it 5? So where is negative 1? Oh, maybe that's what I was thinking. 
All right.